Hey, my name's Alex. If it's your first time here, welcome. I've personally coached many of my clients to overcome their anxiety whilst dating and seen them turn into people who are calmer, more relaxed and able to approach dating with a whole new level of confidence. And in this video, I'm going to reveal the exact mindset shifts needed to transcend dating anxiety forever. I'm going to talk about why the dating anxiety or what's become known as anxious attachment style whilst dating is there to begin with, the biological mechanism of it, and the exact mindset shifts needed to shift this. So stick around until the very end of the video so you can get all the information and you can apply it properly to get the positive results. So after coaching a number of people, I started to see a theme. Almost always, my clients would actually know how they'd prefer to be, or how they'd prefer to feel, act, and behave on a date. They might need some encouragement to tap into it at first, but they can almost always clearly tell me what being relaxed, cool, calm, and confident looks like whilst dating. They just couldn't seem to do it. They'd be completely fine and socially confident around close friends or family members, but as soon as the person is in a dating situation with a dating prospect, the nervous system ramps up, the adrenaline and stress hormones ramp up, and fearful thoughts start popping up left, right, and center. Thoughts like, what if they don't like me? Why didn't they text me back? I wonder what they think about me. Why is the blue tick showing but <laughs> they never text back? And then this often escalates into behaviors they later find embarrassing and make the whole thing fizzle out in seconds by date two or three. It's like a full self arises that's not really you, but pretends to be you and tricks you into identifying with it. And it's got all of these fear stories and you lose sight of yourself. An inauthentic self takes over and appears to take you away from your true self and your natural authenticity. So what's the deal here? You see, in this case, an extreme anxiety response is initiated by encounters with the people that you're attracted to, right? And it's your brain trying to protect you. It's saying there's danger here. There's something to fear. Now, this fear response can be initiated by thoughts, images, and memories from the cortex, the part of the brain that corresponds with these processes, or it completely bypasses the cortex and bypasses the thinking, instead being initiated by a sensory stimulus like a situation which triggers emotional memories stored in the amygdala, the emotional center of the brain. And this begins amygdala-based activation of the sympathetic nervous system, which initiates the fight, flight, or freeze response. There are so many people who engage in talk therapy to try and counter this fear, and that can certainly be powerful. Many people are trying to understand what they're calling their anxious attachment style, which is based on the idea that the way you interact in certain relationships is influenced by what the relationship with your caregivers was like, with anxious attachment being marked by a fear of abandonment, neediness or clinginess, what they call maximizing, trying to get attention on something by talking about it a lot or blowing it up, amongst other things. Just to note, I've also seen these attachment styles switch on and off depending on the situation. Someone might feel confident dating, but then anxious attachment appears later on down the line. Or it could appear right from the beginning. It could also swap in certain relationships where someone who was previously anxiously attached becomes avoidantly attached and vice versa. So it really does depend on the situation. And the content of these thoughts associated with this fear may be associated with adverse experiences in childhood. For example, if there was what was perceived as a particularly horrifying embarrassment around the opposite sex, the fear response then gets locked in as an emotional memory. So how do we counter this and create states of cool, calm confidence in dating situations? Well, there are many different layers to this that come together to form a full healing and a return to yourself. You can bring 
deeper understanding to past situations from a new, wiser self by talking about it, journaling about it, learning to question your thoughts and beliefs. But as I said, sometimes it's deeper than the thinking and we need to learn how to bring the nervous system into states of calm in real time and permeate these practices into our lives and learn how to return to relaxed states of body and breath. This is going to help tell your body and your mind that you're actually safe. We can use direct objective tools to turn down the stress response, to turn down the amygdala-based activation of the sympathetic nervous system. This isn't anything that's gonna take up hours of your day. These are things you can do in the moment as you're doing other things. But it's also wise to set aside some time where you deliberately practice them too. The first is modifying your breathing. Check in with yourself now by putting one hand on your belly and the other on your chest. Breathe in. Did your chest rise before your belly? And did you breathe through your nose or through your mouth? And did you breathe in and out fast or slow? We breathe in different ways throughout our lives for different purposes, but to turn down amygdala-based fear response, we want to be breathing slowly through the nose, from the diaphragm, from the belly. Slow nasal diaphragm breathing. So it's slowing the breath right down, so softly and so light. And if you can't breathe through your nose because it's blocked, don't worry, it's not the most important part of this, but if your nose is chronically blocked or if you're chronically breathing through your mouth, that's something you wanna try and resolve as chronic mouth breathing can lead to a whole range of health problems. And actually learning to breathe slowly through the nose can actually eventually unblock it. So initially, sometimes people find slowing the breath down and focusing on the breath raises their anxiety a little. It may actually feel a little uncomfortable but for most people, they find if they just stay with that feeling and deliberately stay present with it and try to relax, they'll eventually sink into calming benefits of this breathing. And this, together with other breath modifications I don't have time to go into here, it can work to reduce your anxiety. If you really start to incorporate these into your life, you can use these objective tools to notice when your anxiety is triggered and deliberately use these tools to start reversing the anxiety response. And you can use them throughout the day too, just to lower your stress and anxiety across the board. The other tool we have here is progressive muscle relaxation. This also works to reverse the fear response. You know, at the height of my anxiety, I would be clenching my jaw all the time, squinting my eyes, I had this tension all through my body. We don't often realize how much muscular tension we have locked in. People walk around with these rock hard muscles like it's normal. And even people who consider themselves fairly flexible might not realize how much chronic muscular tension is actually in there. You know, our minds are often interpreting so many things as stressful, which triggers the sympathetic nervous system, which triggers muscles into chronically responsive states. You might not even realize this is you. So I invite you to check in with your body now and to see if any areas are particularly tight and consciously relax them by consciously commanding them to relax around your eyes, relax those muscles. If you're clenching your jaw, just support your palate with your tongue and just keep the teeth in a gentle, what you could call butterfly bite. If you feel your shoulders being pulled up towards your ears, just drop them down and relax. You also might find it helpful saying the word release, release, as you consciously release and relax the different muscle groups. And practicing this on a regular basis is likely to further relieve you of the fear response when dating. It's gonna bring down that chronic sympathetic nervous system activation, bringing down the amount of fearful thoughts with it. Another really important thing here is cultivating presence, cultivating the ability to just be with what is, to be 
able to be with your feelings. And when you're experiencing anxiety, you're feeling the effects of these elevated emotions and elevated nervous system. And that corresponds with particular sensations in the body that the mind labels uncomfortable. The question is, is it possible just to be with these sensations? to be knowingly the observer of your thoughts and of these feelings, knowing yourself as the aware spaciousness that these thoughts and feelings appear within, and staying knowingly as your authentic self. When the anxiety is triggered, you can stay present and calm so that you tell your body and brain that you're safe and rewire the amygdala, rewire those emotional memories, because if you can, you'll realize these powerful mindset shifts anyway, which are, when you're dating, you are there to A, have fun, B, have fun with the other person and show kindness, C, listen to what they have to say. The pressure isn't on you to entertain. You become someone they're most likely warm to anyway, automatically as soon as you put most of the focus on listening intently and understanding and learning. And D, you're there to mutually see if you want to continue spending time with each other. Each person is going to come to their own decision about the type of connection they want, if any, and that's okay. Tishnak Khan said, you must love in such a way that the person you love feels free. You know, I always say when people go on dates, it's often like six people are sitting there around the table. You, the other person, the idea of yourself in your head, your idea of them, their idea of themselves in their head, and their idea of you. No wonder things often get tangled and confusing in the beautiful dance of courtship, eh? But we can reverse this by becoming fully present, by staying knowingly ourself. Despite the adrenaline release and the nervous system getting ramped up, we can go on the next date and the next date feeling calmer and calmer and more and more confident. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, go to speak to alex.com and fill in your details to apply for a free call with me to see if you would be a good fit for the program. And with that being said, like this video if you liked it. And of course, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any new videos helping you with conscious personal growth. Peace.